Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Let's Look At with Zebu Nation. And today the game we're going to look at is an early access game. This is called Rebel Inc. It's by Endemic Creation, the publisher and the developer. And as far as I know, they only have one other game to their credit, but it's a game that's pretty good and it's a game that this this one also borrows Perhaps some of the mechanics from, if not, you know, the scenario is completely different. But, you know, some of it, you can see a theme. And the, the game I'm talking about is this, Plague Inc. It's a, it's a game they've turned into a board game. If you're familiar with the board game Pandemic, where you're a team of scientists trying to stop a plague... Plague Inc. is kind of the opposite, where you're trying to create plagues and trying to spread them around the world. And it's a game that's has been pretty critically acclaimed, as you can see here, but it's also started its life as a video game, Plague Inc., but that's not the game that we're going to look at today. We're going to look at Rebel Inc., and as you can see from this disclaimer here, it says, whilst fictional... Rebel Inc. explores important real-world issues, and we've made every effort to deal with them sensitively. Rebel Inc. is developed in cooperation with politicians, businesses, journalists, charities, and government. Now, that's quite a disclaimer for a video game, and you might be wondering, what's, what's that all about? Well, let's get into Rebel Inc. here, go into the main game, and, and we'll talk about what this is about. We'll start in the, the earliest uh, scenario. So there are many scenarios that you can unlock. Currently, they, they don't have the overall campaign uh, finished and ready to go, but they do have a lot of dis different scenarios that you can unlock. And it starts with this one here, the Saffron Field. So let's get to that one, and, and we'll go here. So this is a strategy game. It is... Uh, I guess you could call it a real-time strategy game. There's some definitely RTS-type elements to it, but it's unlike any other strategy game because what this game is about, it isn't about a war. It isn't about fighting a war and winning a war. This is about what happens after a war is done. And so essentially, and why this game had that little disclaimer about being sensitive and that kind of stuff, is you're a government agent and you've been sent to this region that has recently been war torn but is now in the process of returning to governance so you go in there and you've got to sort of set up the government and help the people and help rebuild the infrastructure after a war so you can see how that kind of scenario you might need to be a little bit, uh, you know, sophisticated in your approach towards that kind of thing. So you get a list of different types of government officials that you can choose to be sort of your your person who takes control. And there are a lot of them that you can unlock. I've only unlocked two. The civil servant, he's the default choice, a, re a reliable pair of hands. Or the economist, long-term thinker, works on an annual budget. I found that to be a little bit um, disconcerting for me to to have a big budget and try to spend it. You know, it, I'm not good enough at the game yet to figure out how I should do that. So I'm going to stick with the old basic civil servant here and click next. Now you can have different advisors that you also unlocked. I haven't unlocked any um, advisor slots. I've only unlocked, unlocked a couple here. The investigative reporter and the observer, they give you extra little bonuses while you're trying to do your job. So we'll get to the next here. And then you can choose your difficulty. I like the normal difficulty. So far, you know, I've won some, I've lost some. Normal difficulty is pretty good. I haven't tried brutal and I haven't tried casual, but the normal seems to be pretty good. So I don't know why I would try either one at this point. And then you can name your operation. We'll just go with Colossal Titan. That's fine. So here we are. 
launching Operation Colossal Titan. And like I said, this game isn't like other strategy games. It's It's got a very cool theme. I really enjoyed my few playthroughs that I've had. And I, I just wanted to make sure people are aware of this game because of how different and how cool it is. So here you are, the Saffron Fields. The invasion is over and combat forces have been withdrawn. Despite initial hopes of change, the region is unstable and the population feels neglected. So if you're at all familiar with you know, what's happened in places like Afghanistan and Iraq, you know if you were around during the first and second Iraq wars, this will, this will really resonate with you in terms of now that you've won the war, what do you do? How do you win the peace? And that's what this game is all about. It's about winning the peace, winning the hearts and minds. So the local government has asked you to lead an operation to stabilize the region. You have full responsibility for all civilian and military matters. So you're basically the government manager. You've been brought in to stabilize things. So set up your HQ. This will be the uh, central civilian and military headquarters for Operation Colossal Titan. Choose a location for your HQ. Transport links are helpful. Then press the button to begin. So you've got a few different areas. Each of these is sort of a, um, you know, sort of a, a district or a, a county, maybe. And I like to put my headquarters in the big cities because there's a lot that can happen in the big cities. Like it said, you should put it in a distribution center. You know, you don't want to necessarily put it out in the country because it'll be harder to get resources to places. But also, you don't want the countryside to be neglected because some bad things can happen if they are neglected. But I'm going to put it right here in the middle of the city, the, the largest city around that I can see. You know, I could put it over here in this smaller town, but that's not quite as central. Or even here, this might be a good place for it here. This is much more central. You got bridges, you know, roads. We'll try there. We'll try Delta Yankee. Okay, let's get out of here. So there we go. We've set it up. Now some of the UI isn't quite um, isn't quite understandable, <laughs> but you just sort of click around and you figure it out. All right. So to win, stabilize 100% of the region. The stability bar at the top of the screen, right there. That's pretty legible. Uh, shows your progress and a number of supporters. Fund initiatives to increase your support level and win over supporters across the region. Okay. So, how you start playing and how you start doing things. Oops, authorize initiatives, open the operations screen. So here is the operations screen down here. So you've got your overview. You've got a lot of stuff to look at, but the main thing three things you need to look at are support level, corruption risk, inflation, and then of course you have your funds. So this is the money you have to spend every month you'll get you'll get a new budget. Um, but your support level you increase by by building new things and improving infrastructure and helping out the local population. But the more money you spend, the more corruption that happens and the more inflation that happens. So you really have to balance your spending with sort of, you know, government initiatives that will reduce corruption and reduce inflation and that kind of stuff. So you've got this, you've got this interesting push and pull of you need to spend money to improve things, but you can't improve things too quickly or people will start taking advantage of it. They'll start skimming money off the top. There'll be too much inflation and you can't afford to buy anything else. So it's an interesting balance. And that's only half the game. There's another half of the game that starts a little later. But for now, all you really have to focus on are is spending money for initiatives. And you have three different kinds of initiatives. You have civilian, you have government, you have military. So under civilian, you start out with just a few things you can buy with these civilian initiatives. You have development, you have services, which is sort of winning the hearts and minds, and then you have infrastructure. So infrastructure is things like 
you know, roads and communications and um, things like that, <laughs> I guess. Services are things like, you know, water and sanitation and, and other facilities to help people live their daily lives. And then development is things like, you know, education and jobs and training and, and stuff like that. So really, you want to you wanna start off focusing on all of these you want to be able to to do each of these things so first you have to open discussions so that's only two dollars no problems there and then it opens some other things that you can do and we'll do the same thing here three dollars that opens up you can see water medicine education and then for civilian there we go there's roads and bridges and communication and electricity so you can sort of see uh, what you're looking at and here you've got um, you know farming and education and training and jobs and then government you got some similar things going on with government here you have your anti-corruption you can see that costs twelve dollars you don't necessarily want to start out with that local militia this is good for you know security concerns and making your zones a little safer by organizing some local police so we'll do that real quick district representatives um, this helps you spread the word and get out the word that hey the government is here the government is helping and we're doing good things because that's something that people don't always think about when they think about government is that uh, yes government is always helping people it's always doing things to help people but a lot of time that word doesn't get out there you know I used to work I used to work in the school and we would get these grants and you know a lot of other schools didn't even know that these grants existed even though our school got them every year just because we knew about them and we applied for them and it's the same kind of thing if you don't know what government programs are available to help you then you're gonna think the government's not doing anything because you just the word isn't out there and that's what that helps you do and then military is the other half of the game that I talked about. And right now the military is locked out. There's no need for military at the moment. But the game is called Rebel Inc. And there's a reason for that. It's because eventually some rebels are going to pop up and start making trouble. And we're going to have to deal with them in sort of a military mini game. So let's start our actions and take a look around and see what's going on. So here we go. We will start where you can see it goes month by month. We're now paused in July. Reputation bar shows how long until you lose. So that's over here on the right. Uh, the reputation is limited and the bar on the right shows how much time you have left. It's normal for your reputation to decrease over time, but if it drops to zero, you lose. And that's another thing about getting the word out is getting the word out helps with your reputation and you're going to get other hints later on on how to help your reputation you know anti-corruption and things like that so let's pause it here for a second and take a look around so you can click here and you can look around your different zones. so here's our main base at uh, delta yankee it's currently unstable but there are no threats Local militia forces have been funded, but so far there's nothing else going on. And you can see all these other areas around. We don't really know what's going on outside of our own local area. Now there's the other, there's Alpha Victor, the other big city. So we kind of know what's going on there. You can see we've got 187 supporters. Way to go. 187 people are like, okay, the government's okay. 49,000 neutrals so most of the population is just sort of on on the fence about the government and then you got 2,000 hostiles who think you know they might be left over from the previous regime who knows but they're currently hostile towards the government so we gotta win some of these people over and usually you know they'll complain and say hey we need we need more water or we need more education we need better roads whatever it is they ask for if you start giving them those things through your different projects then you'll start to gain more supporters and and you know you'll be able to switch some of these places over to your side 
a couple of other regions that we we know a little bit about we've got zero supporters here we know we've got 424 hostiles everybody else is neutral same here 410 hostiles no supporters so right now we're pretty weak in the countryside we have no supporters in the countryside that we know of all of our supporters are in the city but also we don't have a ton of of really hostile people out there we got a few but not many so here's a place we could start working on you know um charlie tango it's unstable but it's right next door it's got some nice crossroads that we can link to other places so we you know we got to keep an eye on these places to see what what kind of projects and what kind of infrastructure they want we can take a look at our operation now, like I said, we could just start buying things. But if you can see, just spending the little bit of money we did, corruption is already on the rise. People are already starting to dip their their toes, or well, I guess they wouldn't dip their toes, but, you know, they're, they're dipping into the deep pockets of the government. So some basic things we can do. We can improve the water supplies for $2. That's no problem. Um... You know, medical supplies, easy. Let's look at there's <sighs> Improving the roads is a little bit costly. We'll wait till some people start um, asking about roads. Everything else, it starts to get more expensive. We don't quite need anti-corruption yet. District representatives. I like to do this early because this... Uh, gathers intel and on the other zones so basically you can send out some representatives or you know hire some representatives in these different communities and they'll start giving you reports and telling you more about those those other districts so we'll it's a little bit expensive but we'll buy that early you can see our corruption has gone up our inflation is going up uh recruit lo local police is way too expensive right now so we'll leave that as it is so we've got some you know some things going on right now and uh, we'll see how long it takes for those things to get implemented we'll start the clock here and you can see we're starting to build watch out for inflation it says I've already pointed that out but here we go so you can see where we're building things you know we want we want this district here the uh, Charlie Tango we want them you know to get influenced and here we go uh, Colossal Titan receives funds every month. Your budget is based on your reputation and the number of zones you have stabilized. Your superiors need confidence in your ability to get the job done. So we haven't got a lot of money. Uh, we're up to back up to thirty-four dollars, but that's not a it's not a ton. Here we go. It's October. You know, it takes a little while, but you can see we're starting to build now over here. Uh, get civilian initiatives to increase your support level. You have enough support in a zone, and there are no insurgents present. The zone becomes stable. Okay, let's see. Has anybody become stable? No, nope. Delta Yankee is still unstable, but we're starting to gain some followers. We've got plus 66 followers. Look at that, Charlie Tango. We've got two. We've got two people, or plus two people anyway. Let's take a look at Charlie Tango. So district representative has been assigned 22%. So he's starting to, you know, gather some intelligence. Basic medical supplies have been provided. So they're happy about that. And we gained two supporters. So that's how this works. So concern over lack of health. Local support reduced by less than 1%. So we could, you know, say, okay, this, this district is concerned about health. So we could go back in and start doing more health-related projects to try to get them on our side. So here we go. $4 for core health care, and we'll see if that helps them out. Um, so this has a little star on it. So that means, like, um, that's something that's needed, something that's necessary, something that someone is asking for. So if we spend a little bit more money to expand the health care, then we'll start getting more people on our side. Now, as you can see, corruption is going up, inflation is going up, but it's not too bad right now. Looks like we also have some people looking after, you know, concerned about water. We got a star next to the water. It's only $3. You can purchase that, no problem. Everything else seems okay. Nobody's looking for 
education or opportunities yet. Uh, you know, we could... You know, if we improve the dirt roads, we'll make more zones accessible. We have a bonus to construction, combat, and intel. So once we want to start reaching out to some of the smaller districts, we can start improving the roads so we can get out there. And so more importantly, our construction crews can get out there. But... Um, 14 bucks. Do we want to spend that? That will leave us only with $13 in case something comes up. Is there anything else we really want to spend money on? Regional census, that's a lot. You know, anti-corruption. It'll help us out a little bit. It'll add to inflation. $10. I don't think we need that quite yet. Outreach office. Establish a team to identify ways. There we go. This is something that will help us out. Slightly speeds up the rollout of initiatives in individual zones. So if we start building outreach offices, it'll help our initiatives go much faster. Or PR and media costs a lot. But this will significantly uh, increase our support level. Our support level is pretty good right now. So let's do something for the future here. Let's start with our outreach offices. And there we go. So we spent a lot of money. Inflation is getting up there. So we need to sort of cool it in terms of spending money right now. So let's just start the clock. So we've got the initiatives. And as you can see right now, we're not really reaching out very far. We're not getting out into the, um, the hinterlands here because we're just, we just don't have very far reach right now. We don't have a lot of supporters. Um, and we don't have the roads improved, all that kind of stuff. So it's going to take a while for us to get out there. Now we are reaching out to this province here, Echo Whiskey. That's about our farthest reach right now. Take a look at Alpha Victor. No concerns there. Local militia has been funded, so that'll help us out with stability. Uh, 186 supporters. Okay, we're looking good. 2% stabilized. What else do we got here? So there we go. Bravo Romeo is looking good. Doctors established. Water's established, basic medical. So these people are helping, are looking pretty good. Only 15 supporters. 0% stabilized, but still we've got a lot of projects in the work there. All right, same thing here with Bravo Uniform. So you can kind of see how this part goes. You've got uh -oh, local concerns over communication out here in, in the hinterlands, and that makes sense, right? These people are, are remote. They're cut off. They could use some uh, some communications out there, some cell phone towers. So let's see what we can do. We, we're back up to $35 on the operation. can add some cell phone towers for $8. I think we can upgrade the dirt roads for 10 That's really going to hurt our inflation and corruption. So... Next time around, we're going to have to start focusing on that. Look at that. Look at that huge jump in inflation and construction. Anytime you do a big construction project, it's going to really hurt you for corruption and inflation, just like it might in real life. So, you know, we're going to have to focus on government next and do some anti-corruption stuff. But that's $10. Um... You know, I guess we might as well do it now because we're not going to spend a lot of money in the next month or two. It'll, it'll hurt our inflation a little bit, but not a lot. So we'll do that. Start the anti-corruption. And now we'll move on. So eventually, this is sort of the first half of the game. You get to know the mechanics. You get to understand what you're doing and building things and starting to reach out to communities. And then eventually, some of the communities are going to get unhappy. There's going to be some unrest, and they're going to foment some problems here. So, authorities in Alpha Whiskey want to build a hospital that would improve the provision of health care across the whole region. Should we proceed? So, if you approve the project, you agree to build the hospital, it will increase support level, cost $4, which is not much for a hospital. 
but it will significantly increase corruption and it will incur cost overruns. Uh, we don't have the approval with oversight because we don't know enough about the region. If we reject it, you know, uh, that could have bad repercussions, but it doesn't say anything. Let's approve the project. We've got the budget for it. We've started our anti-corruption, so maybe our anti-corruption will help us out. Uh-oh. Colossal Titan has to foot the bill to cover an unexpected cost. Spent an additional $4. The project has been completed. So there we go. So that helped us out a little bit. But we had to spend some extra money. Here we go. Insurgency rumored. Military initiatives authorized. We don't have a ton of budget right now, so we don't really have a lot going on for military at the moment. But um, insurgents are preparing to attack the region. Military initiatives are now available. Deploy soldiers to defend the region. Okay, let's pause it here. We're starting to build our infrastructure. That's good. But now let's look at our military options and see what we have. So when you start out, this is your only military option, which is deploy coalition soldiers. So you basically have two types of soldiers. You have coalition soldiers, which you can think of as like the United Nations or something like that. It's in some way some kind of foreign troops that you bring in. Now the good thing about foreign troops is they're fairly inexpensive. They're already um, trained and they're ready to be deployed so they deploy much quicker um, but they have drawbacks in that the local population doesn't really like them in their area like they don't like these foreign troops patrolling their streets and you know that kind of stuff so it's it's good militarily because they're good troops they're quick to deploy they're cheaper but it's bad because it hurts your reputation. Now, the other type of troops are local troops, but those need to be trained and equipped. So those kind of troops, they cost a little more, and they take much more time to deploy. But once they're deployed, you know, the population is pretty happy with them. And the other thing I forgot to mention about coalition soldiers is coalition soldiers eventually want to go home. <laughs> so, uh, every, I think it's six months, they complain and say, we want our soldiers home, and the local population also says, we don't want these people here, so get them out of here, and you kind of have to make a decision to, to keep them deployed and lose some status, or send them back home and lose the actual troops. So there's that kind of thing going on, which local troops don't have that problem once you buy them train them equip them they're there for good so we'll start with some coalition troops because we can't afford that it's only seven dollars of our eight dollar budget so we can deploy one troop and we will close that out and start our thing so there we go you can see our soldiers now are being deployed Soldiers training on the left of screen. Soldiers are being trained. You can see their progress on the development token to the left of the screen. When they're ready to deploy, deploy them by dragging the token into a zone. So here basically, you know, they're, they're already trained soldiers, but now they just need a little bit of extra training for, you know, whatever it is, you know, local customs or local terrain or whatever it is. These soldiers just need a little bit of training, and so they go much faster. You can see how fast that training is going and now they're ready to be deployed. Now we don't really know where to deploy them right now. It seems they seem to be pointing us toward Charlie Oscar. We have one supporter out there, only 145 hostiles. Um, no threats detected. I don't think we have any threats to detect. It. Concern reducing support by 11%. So these people are still worried about health, but our health is up to 48%. Mobile clinics deployed. So we're doing a lot of health care here, um, but maybe we need to do even more. We'll see about that. How are we looking here? 4% stabilized. Still got a lot of work left to do. Delta uniform still... You know, mobile clinics are almost deployed there, but there's no real concern over medics here. 
more concern over hospitals so maybe we do need to do some more training here I mean we have doctors we have pharmacists we have labs set up and it's still not enough so health care is a real big problem in this region our operation only has four dollars um, so it costs five dollars for health programs six dollars for polio eradication so we still have a lot of a lot of stuff to do medically but let's unpause it and see if any sort of insurgency pops up where we need to deploy our soldiers I don't want to deploy the soldiers yet because like I said they make people unhappy so far we're up to ten dollars okay let's pause it again and let's do some of that medical stuff corruption is really high we now have a support level that's good but corruption is still getting high up there uh, let's do personal health program see if that will help us out any but that's really all we can afford all right okay there we go insurgents reported in foxtrot Oscar so kind of as I expected out in the hinterlands over here um, they're preventing stability left unhindered they will take over the the zone deploy soldiers to stop them so now we can deploy our soldiers and the mini game begins soldiers deployed in foxtrot Oscar your soldier unit has de been deployed to the zone you can drag the soldier token to move it to different zones around the regions to combat insurgents so this is a little mini game where basically you fight the insurgents and they start moving either they stay and fight your soldiers or they'll move around and basically the only way you can destroy insurgents is you have to trap them so right now there's really no way we can trap these guys because we only have one unit of soldiers so if we beat them here they're just gonna move over here or over here or over here they're just gonna run around so really you need multiple units in order to fight a insurgent war you have to basically have to build a wall of soldiers and then sort of slowly shrink the options of where those insurgents can go let's see if we can f afford more troops we can we can afford our first green troops so deploy national soldiers they're slow to train but they're permanent soldiers slower and weaker than coalition troops but much less likely to antagonize the locals so let's buy one of those now you know we can also upgrade some of our troops we can get interpreters and guides to help us out we can get drones to um, you know find the insurgents we can even get airstrikes those can be a little bit of a two you know a uh, double-edged sword right there because they can you can also bomb civilians and that can hurt your reputation and their coalition forces so you can see they're blue so the more coalition forces the more it hurts your reputation so we're gonna go and we're gonna deploy some national soldiers it's gonna take a while for these guys to deploy but we'll start them cooking right now so here we go so you can see here look at how how much training they have to do a lot more training uh, we'll see if our one unit of, uh, of soldiers can can hold out for the time being basically want to we want to keep these insurgents busy keep them bottled up here in the mountains and not let them spread to some of the more populated areas regional stability is looking good five percent you can see we're gonna start pushing the insurgents out and they're gonna move up there now there's more insurgents here so we're gonna have to so the insurgents have escaped uh, to foxtrot kilo and there's another group brewing over here in the mountains somewhere where we, we haven't really gotten a good view of them so now we're gonna need more troops if we're gonna stop these guys so let's stop there we got seventeen dollars so we can buy more troops and more troops we're gonna buy another coalition troop only cost nine but they'll be out there pretty quickly oh we can also get some garrisons garrisons are a huge help but we've got corruption problems 
Got a lot of corruption going on right now, but we're going to spend a little bit more money. And then after this, I didn't want to buy garrisons. I wanted to buy more troops. But anyway, anyway, um, after this, we're going to have to work on our corruption here. How much does this cost? That's done. How much does this cost? 14. That's a lot. So we'll work on that. All right, these guys, it's going to take them a while to deploy. Uh-oh, we got a, an event here. Um, site at Delta Uniform chosen for garrison. Okay, so if we construct the garrison there, it'll cost $4, but it will help us ag against any insurgents. That's fine. So we've now established a small garrison here, so if we... Okay, so this place is angry because these people have been here for a while. I guess we'll move our soldiers in there. We'll start fighting these dudes. Insurgents take over Foxtrot Mike. That's not good. So now they actually sort of own this place. It's up in the mountains. It's not so bad right now. But anyway. You've won over enough local people to stabilize the zone. Your reputation has increased. That's outstanding. So you can kind of see how the game goes and, and where it goes. And it starts to get hectic very very hectic especially once you have the military going and the civilian going and then you got corruption and you got all this stuff so I think you get an idea of how it's going I don't want this video to go on too long but you can see the mechanics you can see how they work you can see how they blend together it's very interesting I might do a couple more playthroughs I might you know continue this in another video but for now I think we got an idea uh, of what we're looking at like I said, this is in early access right now, so there will be a campaign. There'll be, you know, more things, more details. Like they've recently added a few more maps. They've added things like caves and armored vehicles, and what else? Have they they've added like a, a map that has a big dam on it. So you, so that adds another sort of strategic element where you have to repair the dam and keep the insurgents away from the dam and sort of use the dam to to like you know help your areas with um, irrigation and stuff like that so they've got a lot of different ideas I don't know if some of this stuff will be moving into DLC once they come out of early access but for now all of these updates have been free which is pretty cool so there you go that's Rebel Inc it's very cool it's a very different kind of strategy game than than you've seen before Unless you've played, you know, Plague Inc. or something like that. But anyway, I give this one a thumbs up for early access. We'll see w when it gets released fully. I'll probably do another review of it. But for now, it's looking very, very promising. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.